So uh, that, this is the title of the lecture right now. So we have robots everywhere. Uh, also, when we take a cup of coffee, it's made by robots mo most of the times. Uh, in the supermarkets, as you can see here, most of them are, are used uh, on a daily basis. Uh, they're robotic cars, and so uh, we humans uh, really love to be surrounded by robots. Um, in flexible endoscopy, robots can be used for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. For diagnostic, you have uh, electromechanical control of the endoscope and uh, automotive locomotion, so robots go um, ahead alone. And then therapeutic is the master-slave-driven uh, instruments and master-slave-driven endoscope and instruments. So um, probably when you think on robots and really miniaturization, this is what we always um, have thought on, uh, on uh, capsules that could travel alone inside the, the human body, inside the intestine, and do everything by themselves, uh, take biopsies, do optical coherence uh, microscopy, um, um, go back, um, turn around, and so on. Uh, we are almost there. Uh, some capsules can be driven by magnets, but we'll see what the future will bring, especially in this topic. What is reality now is um, um, deep learning and uh, artificial intelligence with recognition of, of uh, polypoid lesions and polyps in the colon. Um, a lot of progress has been done in this field. And I personally think that this will, this will add a lot of value. We won't become lazier, um, um, as somebody could think, but this will add value to what we are doing and to and will add quality to our jobs. So you can see accuracy and sensitivity are very, really, really, has been really, really high in this, um, in this study here. Um, robots um, exist, or semi-robotic platforms exist for several years. You can see here the Telefax from Twente University and uh, from the Netherlands, or Invendoscope from Invendo, Germany. Um, these scopes, uh, in some circumstances, can be used also for small polypectomies. Um, uh, small snares can go through the channels, and uh, yeah, we can be also operative in these cases. Or like this guy here, uh, that that um, can move um, autonomously or with the help um, of a joystick anywhere. Or the other one, the Neoguide Intuitive Surgical, um, can can move in any any direction that is really different from what we see in gastroscopy and colonoscopy, especially in ERCP and and ultrasound. So, uh, talking about robots in uh, diagnostic and therapeutic endoscopy, um, this is what uh, has happened. So, we endoscopists are literally stealing uh, the field from, from surgeons. Uh, if you think about hemorrhoids, polyps, uh, poem, everything that you have seen today also, it, it, the previous solution of, uh, in the past uh, has been by surgery. And you can see uh, the open laparoscopic intervention, radiology, and flexible endoscopy are gaining over surgery. And this is what is literally happening. Uh, and today with, with notes from open surgery to endoscopy and uh, um, surgical endoscopy. And what we are uh, seeing uh, today, we can deliver also drugs with two linings. We can um, act in the third space and we can enter any, any, any part of, of uh, the human body with just um, a flexible endoscopy. So um, the minimally invasive flexible surgery or, or flexible endoscopy, how we should call this, um, the benefits for the surgeon and for the endoscopist, I'm mentioning both surgeon and endoscopist because we are treating the same diseases here, our modification in conventional workflow, continuity of ergonomic principles, changes in senses, sight and pot, and um, step learning curve. And if we, if we compare East from West in endoscopic treatment, for instance, of uh, superficial can, uh, cancer, we can uh, see in this na national survey called, um, conducted in between 2009 and 2011 um, <coughs> with um, uh, factors limiting ESD in the right spread use and the skills and factors increasing difficulty, it comes really clear what uh, what is the difference and uh, of course uh, uh, the the west cannot uh, really compete with the east because uh, there is uh, endo um, uh, endogenous factors and uh, um, uh, for carcinoma in c2 very frequent um, um, uh, onsets of these kinds of neoplasia 
So um, do we really need robotic platforms in Europe and USA? The answer is yes. Um, um, here uh, we, we, we know from the past, from the Da Vinci uh, structure, for, for example, from the Da Vinci robot, that the robot gives stability, robustness, strong instruments, large working channels, move to a laparoscopic paradigm. So we have triangulation, independent, and um, uh, what happened? Can I continue? Oh, we are on air? Okay, sorry, sorry, uh, something happened. So, um, we have stability, robustness, large working channels, triangulation, and the triangulation is the most important thing, and I will explain it to you just in a second. Separation of vision control and instruments control ergonomics, real haptic feedback. So, the haptic feedback is the most important thing that we, we have with robotic platforms. So, going on, the three most important things that robots in endoscopy will give us or are already giving because there are some robots that have been commercialized are traction, retraction, and triangulation. So this means stability, robustness, stronger instruments, and everything what we said before. When I started dealing in robots, uh, you know, I work in Gemelli Hospital, but I also work in, in Strasbourg, so I, I often um, chat with the engineers. Uh, the first thing that, that uh, was really unclear to me was the traction, retraction, triangulation, especially the triangulation. So I said, how can I explain? I asked an engineer, I sent him an email, how can I explain to, to the fellows what is um, uh, triangulation? Um, and then I received this. I said, okay, this guy must be, must be crazy or something else because um, uh, what this means and, and then uh, I went home and I started thinking I said this guy is a genius and in the email at, attached to the email there's this photo with a sentence this is you doing endoscopy I said yes that is me doing endoscopy because I should close one eye I have one endoscope and I have a forceps here so uh, if I move this way or this way it's like doing a gastroscopy with the forceps open, so I bring the forceps anywhere, and this is same for ESD, POEM, or anything. And if you think about robotic platforms, um, it is like you you are uh, the endoscope, and then you have everything coming from here, and then you can act in front of yourself. That is exactly what the human body is doing, and that is exactly how robots are working. So we have triangulation in front of us. So. Basically, this is it. We can see here um, how robots uh, work. This is a stable platform, user's interface, uh, where we have traction, contra-traction, and retraction. This is the um, ISIS robot from Strasbourg, developed by Storz and IRCAD in collaboration and the ISIS University of Strasbourg. So you can see all the fine movements that can be done. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, um, the operator is seated in a really, really uh, nice interface um, 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 platform that is same like the Da Vinci robot. But um, the last version uh, that I have seen is uh, up to date, it is uh, extremely, extremely uh, good. And um, what I will show you right now is really surprising. So uh, I don't know how many of you know uh, that uh, the Da Vinci platform in surgery is following the breathing of the patient, the heartbeats and everything. And uh, so the surgeon in front has a still image of what he is doing well. That is coming in uh, endoscopy. So here we have uh, the robot and uh, uh, the robot is following the wall of the colon. So if there is a peristalsis or, or bowel movements, the endoscopist will see still image. Um, so this will be a great advantage that we will have from robotic endoscopy, one of the greatest probably, uh, together with triangulation and degrees of movement. Well, uh, the easy clinical platform that you're seeing right here is something, um, sorry. Okay, sorry. 
that, that works. That was the video. I don't know why it doesn't start. That works with uh, uh, more than eight, uh, around 18 um, uh, degrees of, of freedom. So with this platform, uh, one of our fellows uh, worked, uh, Pietro Mascagni, worked in, uh, in um, uh, Strasbourg. And um, um, this paper came out. And you can see the title. It is uh, democratizing endoscopic submucosal dissection. Why it is democratizing? Because uh, it was shown uh, to be um, very safe, very uh, efficient, and very fast uh, compared to traditional ESD um, in, um, in uh, performing this procedure in the rectum in uh, lesions that are around six centimeters. Well, uh, not trained endoscopist uh, that uh, just one saw an ESD, was seated on the platform and did an ESD in around 20 minutes compared to a Japanese expert that needed two and a something hours. So this is the biggest advantage in uh, terms of sparing of time and uh, easiness of performing the procedure. So um, robotics are really, really uh, bringing something new in our field. What you're seeing here is, is um, something that... Um, that um, we already have. Um, you can see here the platforms in the same time while you're doing our ESD, we can uh, uh, have a CT scan image. We have it in our room, in a hybrid room, and we can see exactly um, the, what are the, uh, where the arteries are, where the lymph nodes are, and why not doing full thickness resection, and why not taking also lymph nodes. So what are we then? Are we gastroenterologists? Are we surgeon? Are, or are we simply robotic endoscopists? So this is the future. And here down, you can see uh, the video of the dissection of, an, of the performing an ESD um, very, very, very easily by a technician in this case that is sitting on a chair as in simply um, cutting, cutting the, 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 um, the tissues. So there is another thing. Uh, this is the Medrobotics robot. This already has been there. Some several reports published here. Uh, I will show you briefly. This is this has been invented for um, uh, otorhinolaryngo surgery, and uh, in endoscopy um, it has been also tested. Um, I don't know how we can send this video faster. Anyway, I will show everything of it. Um, and here you can see uh, in, in the video published by, by Chris Thompson how really uh, the, the platform is. Uh, why it's not running? It is not running. Ah. I'm so sorry. We don't have the video here. You can find this very easily if you type these words. In, in, ah, OK, it starts. Um, it's not working. Okay. Anyway, um, here we have videos on uh, resections, dissections, and uh, the robotic-assisted uh, endoscopy. If if we have some time, I I would love to show you this this video uh, because these guys here perform uh, a septotomy of a zenker. Uh, diverticulum, then they do suturing, then they do full thickness resections, and uh, and so on. Many many things that can be done in in uh, in um, in endoscopy. Uh, you can see here. Uh, ah, it stopped. I'm very sorry for this. So. Uh, next things that we are working on, this has been just accepted for publication, is a, stero a stereoscopic vision that enhances flexible endoscopy performances on a validated dry lab model. And uh, after that, we applied it in a real life endoscopy. I personally performed, um, I performed the suturing of the stomach with the Apollo overstitch and the ERCP in 3D. So uh, the platform in Strasbourg per, um, allows of performing 3D cholangiography in the meantime we see 3D endoscopy, so that is a completely 4D procedure because we have also the movement. And um, it's really, really something new. And um, it, it, I am convinced that it helps tonulation. So we understand very, very easily um, how um, uh, the papilla goes, where we should uh, 
uh, touch the, the orifices and so on. So uh, robotics and multidisciplinarity, here you can see um, uh, uh, a figure of me, Mariano Gimes, uh, and the surgeon doing uh, all together gastroenterology and interventional radiologists. We have the same clothes, we are covered the same. We, we, if you don't uh, recognize us, you say these are four surgeons performing something. Only one of these guys is surgeon. Uh, I'm a gastroenterologist and there is radiologist. And um, we are uh, performing a um, combined procedure with spyglass for cutaneous access, and then there is a surgeon helping us um, uh, in all. And uh, uh, this is the room where we actually do everything. We have a CT scan, we have MRCP, and the robotic arm. So the robot is there helping us already, even though it is not an um, endoscopy robot. So my father had this car, and this is about 20 years ago, and the best of it, its technology uh, was the cleaners of of the of the um, of the lights you can you, you can see here and it was amazing how this technology worked so in the in in the years there has been a lot of progress in all the things that that surround us so we really um, do not anymore pay attention to anything that we that we do and in medicine um, you can, it it works like this you can see us uh, doing the procedure and just a second after, uh, there is a robot that, that is doing the 3D reconstruction for us. And we have the images there immediately. And uh, this is a post-operative biliary stricture, like in the lady that you saw before. It is bismuth type 2. And I placed multiple plastic stands because I was guided by, by, by the robot. And I knew exactly where to place the 10 French stands. And in this case, I placed 6 stands. So, Almost, we are almost there. Uh, robotic surgery, endoscopy, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and 3D. And why not uh, in the future um, having this uh, really nice capsule uh, that will um, do everything so us? So the question is this Are we robotic endoscopists? And moreover, these are some scientists from um, the Hong Kong University that develop surgical nanorobotics. So this, um, these uh, robots are uh, oscillating, uh, creating oscillating magnetic fields and can reconfigure the shape of the nano swarm from overlapping ribbons that you see on the left and um, can cluster in lumps that you, you can see in the right. Well, this is um, groundbreaking um, technology that can deliver drugs, that can deliver radiotherapy, that can deliver oncology drugs, that can do anything that we could like like to change shape and so on. So this is our uh, end of life uh, workshop in Rome and you are more than welcome there. Thank you very much for the attention.